Arcade Perfect, My Arse. Ok guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect, My Arse. This week we're taking a look at Shoot'em Up Silkworm, published in 1988 by Tecmo. Now what was quite original about this game is you could actually pl I play the part of a helicopter or the jeep. Now I don't think anybody ever went to jeep. You always went as the, the helicopter. <laughs> Who wants to drive a poxy jeep? Now I think you could uh, you could play this two player, simultaneous two player, which would obviously make the game that wee bit easier. Never played the arcade version. I mean, obviously I'm playing it in main. What I meant to say is I've never played it. I've never seen this in the arcades at all. Now you've got this little bit here, whereas all the wee bits join forces to kind of make some, well, I was just going to say make some big helicopter that you can't destroy but I have seems to have killed him very very easily. Now you've only got one fire button which fires the rockets and the bombs which is quite good because I'm not a fan of games that you have to press the separate buttons for them, you know, that's just too much to think about, especially the shoot up, you want to be able to concentrate and move and rather than having to worry about what button do I need to press. So it's a really, really nice game. The only game, the only version this I ever got to play was on the Amiga. Like a lot of people, you know, my first experience of games was always on the home computers, on the home systems. It was only later on when I got MAME that I actually got to play play the arcade ones because I, I never lived, actually lived near to an arcade. So apart from the sort of common stuff like Space Invaders, I never got to experience 99% of arcade games in the actual arcade itself. So yeah, this is an end of level baddie type thing. And it's good night, Vienna. On to level two. Whoa. Oof. Yeah, I would imagine having the, the, a two-player game at like this. It would make it a lot easier because you, have, you would also have the jeep going along the bottom, taking out all the sort of ground-based uh, bodies. Concentrate on the stuff in the air. Can you destroy these tanks before they hit the ground? Sure, if you can. Right, here's this uh, baddie thing again. I seem to kill him really easily the first time. It might have been more uh, luck than anything, I think. <laughs> Boom! Anyway, that is the arcade one. Let's take a look at some home versions. Right, to start things off, this is the ZX Spectrum one. Produced by Random Access. Um, I can't remember who published this. Was it the Sales Curve, I think it was called? Right, now, oddly, there appears to be a complete lack of any sound. I don't know whether that was the case, or whether it was just because... It's not working properly. Now, interestingly, you can see there the little jeep. I was just going to say the little jeep's kind of moving along the bottom himself, but he's not actually firing at all. So I don't know what's going on there. Detailed graphics as usual, really, really nice. I certainly hope there was sound in the actual game because that would be a bit rubbish playing a, a shoot 'em up. In complete silence. But 
But yeah, detail graphics, typical Spectrum, you know, um, sort of few colours, but looks really nice, really detailed looking. Now that thing does not want to die at all. I always thought it looked like a goose. When I played the Amiga one I used to always think it looked like a big goose with its big neck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I managed to kill it in the arcade version. I always thought if you blast it often enough it dies, but this one does not want to die at all. Yeah, definitely misses sound, but I'm, I'm hoping it's probably just the particular copy that I've got here, I don't know. At last, on to the end of level, I always call them end of level guardian, that's probably a bit a silly term. Some of them were end of level guardians, but it's the big boss. But yeah, graphics are excellent. Very, very authentic to the arcade one. Probably slightly easier than the arcade, I would think. Right, on we go, level two. Struggling to kill these tanks. There we go, get the invulnerability thing. I think that's what it is. I need to kill that thing. That's going to give me problems. And it did. So, yeah, that's a really, really nice version. That is the Spectrum one. Right, here we go, we've got sound at last. This is the Atari ST one. Never played on this. Now, I do know, because a few people have told me, that the emulator that I use for the Atari ST uh, is a piece of software called Steam. I've always thought it was really, really uh, quite realistic. But quite a few people have said that some of the games, Atari ST games that I feature, you know, they play quite jerkily on the emulator, whereas in the actual hardware itself, it plays super smooth. Now, unfortunately, well, I do have an Atari ST, but I don't have any games or any way of loading anything. I don't even, it's in my loft. So I've got to stick to the emulators, unfortunately. So it may be that I actually unfairly marked down the Atari ST versions of games just because it plays jerky but it may not on proper hardware. But graphically, can't really fault it. It's not got as many colours as the arcade version obviously but it looks the part. Here at the top left it says cheap press fire, so you can always have simultaneous two players. Game over, let's go for another quick go I think. Atari ST one, that is nice. Right, this is the Commodore 64 one. Never actually played this. I think I'd, I'd actually moved on to the Amiga by this point. Uh, 
this is really, really nice. Nice, nicely kind of coloured sprites. All moves very well. Looks really nice. And again, I think you can have the simultaneous two players. Yeah, this is no slouch. I mean, it's... <laughs> Now what I like is they've, they've kind of reduced the size of the sprites, so you're kind of getting more of the screen in. And graphically and, and sound wise as well, this is this is top notch, this is really really good. That's the thing, I mean, uh, if you happen to watch the uh, me and my son Chums Talk Pish episode 8, which came out last week, I think it was. The, uh, we touched on how every home computer is capable if it's in the right hands. If it's in the right hands, the programming wise, you know, they're all capable. And this is a perfect example of the C64. You know, there's some horrendous conversions on the C64, but this isn't one of them. This is actually really, really good. It looks and sounds like the arcade. I mean, it's as fast as they come as well, you know. Yep, super impressed with that one. That is a C64 one. Right, this one is the NES. Now, if it's anything like any other arcade conversion on the NES, it's probably going to change graphics because that's what they always seem to do. <laughs> and is this going to be any different? Well, oh, interestingly, it's kind of arcade like. Graphically, it's not too dissimilar from the C64 one. It's got obviously some background graphics. Man, it's not bad at all. Is that the wee, uh, invulnerability thing? Yeah, hey, there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see they've uh, they've stuck to the original. It's quite difficult because the actual enemies themselves are very small, so it's actually quite difficult trying to shoot them. Yeah, I thought they were going to completely change it, like they always seem to do for some strange reason. I don't know why they do that with NES. Is it to try and give people value for money? I've got no idea. I don't remember seeing these rocket things in the, any other version. Here comes the big goose again. Well, he's not quite so big in this one. <laughs> Okay, so it has it's done its own thing slightly. <laughs> yeah, the arcade one and other versions you get a sort of helicopter thing, but this one's changes it slightly. But it's still a good game. Just doesn't stick strictly to the arcade version. Which is what people want. You want the arcade one, you don't want them to tweak it. By all means, add in extra levels, but stick to the original formula. I don't know why they insist on doing that with the NES one. But anyway, yeah, not a bad version at all. Right, this one is the Amstrad. And how do we start at number one? 
joystick zero. There we go. Right now, like the Spectrum one, you've got the uh, the Jeep on the screen. Ooh, now this looks nice, but it's very slow. You can see here now again. This is under emulation. I don't know whether the actual proper version would be like this. I'm guessing it probably would be because the emulation is pretty spot on. As far as I'm aware, it's just all a bit sluggish. Could be because it's got so many colours. I mean, graphically wise, it's really nice. See why the, the on the C64 they made the sprites that way, but weird. It just gives you that bit more kind of screen space to you know manoeuvre. I don't really want to mark this one down, but it's just obviously it's just a wee bit slow when there's a lot of things on the screen. You can see everything starts to kind of grind to halt a wee bit. But graphically, this is probably the nicest out of the 8 bits, I would say. Yeah, look at the explosions. I mean, it's, they've really gone to town with the graphics. But unfortunately, it appears to have been slightly at the expense of sort of gameplay. It's just things slow up. That a wee bit too much for my liking. But still a nice version, so that is the Amstrad one, and let's take a look at the very, very last version. Now, I've deliberately saved the best for last, this is the Commodore Amiga one. Now, I've read on the internet that some people reckon that this version is actually better than the arcade one. So we shall see. Graphically, how impressive this is. Sound is excellent. Is it better than the arcade one? I don't know, I wouldn't go that far. But it's certainly a spot on version from what I can see. Ah, there's the rockets. I was Talking about that in the NES, but I didn't notice the rockets flying up. But here it's here. And there's a big goose. Or duck. Or swan, you yeah. know? It's all a bit mayhem. But it's an excellent shooter. It's a game I've not really played. I must admit. But I think it'd be good fun playing with two players. One person controlling the jeep, another obviously in charge of the helicopter. So version wise, what have we got? Um, Spectrum's really really nice, obviously it's monochrome, uh, Atari ST one's nice, slightly juddery but that may just be down the emulator. C64 one, I was really impressed with that, I thought that's probably my favourite 8-bit version. NES one is nice again. Again, it changes, it tweaks a level slightly. Um, so I don't know why they do that. Um, the Amstrad one is probably the prettiest looking 8 bit version, but it just there's a bit of slowdown, which I'm not too keen on. But this one here is it's pretty much arcade perfect. I can see where, where people come from saying it's, you know, that it's a good game. So, yeah, let's think. In, bronze position, third place. I'm probably going to go for the Spectrum one. Really nice version. Uh, obviously lacks the colour and the only one downside to it is the lackey sound. In silver position, I'm going to go for the Commodore 64. I think it's excellent. You know, really, they've, they've kind of used the hardware properly. They've, they've, they've reduced the size of the sprites, but they've managed to retain the sort of look and feel of the arcade one. Um, but in gold medal position, this can only be one, and it's got to be the Commodore Amiga one. This is excellent. This is really, really nice. But there's not a bad version. I mean, every version we've played has been really, really nice. 
I don't think there's any versions I missed out. I don't think this was out in the PC or anything, but... I don't think you can actually destroy these little tanks, oddly enough. But as usual guys, if there's a particular game you want to see get given the arcade perfect my arse treatment, just put your comments below. And as usual guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And finally, thank you very very much for watching.